Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to another Car Expos video. Today we're gonna to be working on a Skoda Superb Mark II 2011 uh, CRD diesel engine, engine called CFFB. And the issue that we are having is we've got engine light for the EGR valve and the EGR valve is making some noises as well. I'm gonna turn the engine on. I'm gonna ask Luke to turn the engine on. And the engine on. Look. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it. It's not making a noise now, is it? Oh, there we go. So that noise is the EGR valve. And he's doing it when he's driving the car as well. He's doing it when he's driving the car as well. Turn the engine off again, please. Hear that? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna scan the car. Opa's gonna give us the fault, which is. So we've got Skoda Superb Mark II 2011 diesel engine called CFFB 2 litre so let's see what codes are installed so there you go that's what we have there's one there we go P040300 exhaust gas uh, recirculation control circuit intermittent that's probably we haven't got the engine management light on right now but it has been the engine man management light has been on for how long now a couple days yeah a couple days it was on all the time anyway I can hear the EGR just trying to to do something open or close and let me try to there we go, you can hear it. Well, we're gonna do it, uh, an active test now. So I've got the EGR valve there selected and I hope you can hear it. Let me get out, out the car. There we go, I hope you can hear that. Stop it again. Stop it. And to me, it seems all like all the electronics are working. To me, it seems to be the cogs where the motor is, you know, to uh, to activate the the EGR valve, open or close. I think the cogs probably worn out. So we're gonna take the EGR, EGR valve out and then inspect it and see what's going on with it i disconnect the battery here first i always like to do that the next step i'm gonna remove the exhaust from the turbo the top here uh remove the sensor as well sensor is a 22 millimeter and then you have three nuts for the heat shield which is a 10 millimeter The heat shield lifts up. Now we're gonna remove that clump. It has a five mil Allen key. The little clump comes off. Underneath the car now, so the jar valve is just at the top here. What I decided to do, I'm gonna remove this sensor out of the way here for the oil. And at this, uh, again, there's another bracket here for the GPF, two 13 millimeter nuts. Hopefully, that should allow us to, to move the, the GPF, as you can see, it's already moving. Should move it to the left, hopefully. Then I decided 
to remove the drive shaft only because I think it's gonna make the job a lot easier and our, there are six M10 bolts and this is literally the last one here and the reason I decided to remove is because our CV boot is gone as well so we're gonna replace that right so this is the last 10 millimeter well M10 bolt for the drive shaft the drive shaft should come off there we go so there we go that's the M10 bolt there are six like this so now the drive shaft is disconnected from from the gearbox actually it gives me a lot better access to it let me show you that so you can actually see it where it is now you know you can see the the water pipe there I think this is the turbo light oil line so the return to the oil sump or to the back to back to the engine right so let's remove try to get this GPF to the side here I'm gonna do that from the top all right so just remove the last bolt from there is another 13 millimeter bolt it goes just there the top and now the GPF should be should be loose really Open, oh yeah yeah excellent so now we have the access for those uh, Torx, Torx bolts here there's one here there's one on the top as well there's one there in the corner all right so 27 mil bolt for the other end of the drive shaft I got a look to press on a brake and then if I break a bar um, I broke the, the bolts loose they're normally very tight We removed the drive shaft, six M10 bolts, and then a 27 mil bolt from, from the wheel there, from the wheel side. And now reveals, you know, you have a lot more space here to work with the, the EGR valve. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're gonna have to make more space to remove the EGR. I already loosen and remove all the bolts from, from that pipe on the top there. There are two nuts, thir uh, 30 millimeter, millimeter nuts at the top and two T30 screw or bolt at the bottom. So that comes off. Now we have what I believe is the oil return line for the turbo, which is a 27 mil bolt here. And then two either 10 millimeter I believe and or T40 at the top so that creates more space and then you have this bungee bolt here also comes from the turbo to remove is a 16 mil socket so you remove that the way you have this water water pipe here that you're gonna have to remove and another one, let me bring you back, another one in the corner here as well. So we're gonna remove that. And then you have this other connection here, I will already removed the bolts uh, to T30. And then you have the other side as well. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it there. Let's see. I can't quite get it in the shots there. Goes there. Can't, can't quite get it in the shots there. Pull that down. And then and then should be the four fixings for the actual EGR valve, which are 
four T40. So you have one in there. You have this vacuum line as well that they have to remove from here. And then you have another T40 there, and then two at the top. So that's where we are at now. So I'm just gonna carry on, remove everything, and then I'll show you when it's out. Okay, the old DJR valve is out of the car. So that pipe it was, I was able to remove it without removing all the air. Uh, air filter housing and all those pipes there it was a bit tricky I had to do all blind and then the other one here they all like T30 uh, bolts like this one here and then you have a water line here uh, the cooling line and then another one here so I remo remove that and let me take that off so here we have to remove this as well, we have the, the pipes for the turbo um, inlet and outlet, oil inlet and outlet. So you got two bundle bolts at the bottom here, which they are here, 27 and uh, 16 mil. At the top you have either a 10 millimeter bolt or T40 that goes in here underneath the turbo. And then you have to remove this is 817 spanner that you need to remove that that goes at the top of the turbo there. It's right there. So the other side here where we have the motor and this cover. Can you hold that look please? So remove the cover here for the mechanism. And straight away I can feel a lot of resistance here. I can feel there's something not quite right inside there. And that, we worked it out a little bit, but this, this was actually getting stuck here. There we go. It's getting stuck in position. So that was basically the noise that we, we were having before. Exactly the same noise. So I can feel that the cogs inside is not quite right. And it should come back every time. See, and it stays, it stays stuck in position there. See, it's actually stuck on now. Let's see if we can make it come back. There we go. Pop it stuck on. See, it should come back every time, and it's not. Right, so get the new one in. Right, all finished down here. Got the drive shaft back in, back in place. Um, the jar valve, the GPF filter is in, all the, all the nuts there. Everything back in place. All we have to do now is to finish at the top. Right, everything finished at the top here. Got the heat shield back in, the last bolt for the GPF in the corner and the clamp pro clamp is done up as well two things that i want to recommend removing the drive shaft makes the job a lot easier and to remove it the gpf must be out of the bracket and also when you're putting everything back do this clamp first connect the gpf to the turbo first um, and then fix the gpf in, in the bracket again so now we're just gonna test the EGR again to see what's what sounds like. So I've got to select the EGR valve. That's okay. There you go. I hope you are able to hear it. One more time. Sounds very different. Nice and smooth. So I'm gonna stop that now. So 
what we're gonna do next we're gonna try to open up the jar and see what's happening it's definitely something mechanical uh, the electronics is all working you know we're gonna open up and see what's like all right so here we are so what exactly happened to this EGR valve I'm quite sure well I'm 100% sure it was a mechanical failure now but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove the cooling matrix here on the side and uh, so to have a better to a better understand what goes on inside all right so here we have the, the cooling <clears throat> side of the the EGR valve and I don't know if I can show you very well but there's quite a few blockages there so the top bit well that channel there oops that channel there is where the water runs through and around and that's the exhaust gases enters the top and then comes out at the bottom comes out at the bottom to the EGR and the other side here so you have this actuator here for for the exhaust gases so when it's in this position here the exhaust gases is going around the cooling all the time and then when vacuum is applied it opens up so allows exhaust gases coming out from the engine straight to the EGR and the EGR valve is there as well and it's basically that rod that goes up and down so opens and closes the EGR valve so what I'm gonna do everything is working here it's fine so I'm gonna take the motor out uh, the motor is actually working I tested the motor the motor is actually working is something inside some mechanism inside that is broken because uh, when I apply uh, voltage to or power to the motor it, it works but that rod well that mechanism doesn't move at all you just hear that the you know noises of the motor working let, let me let me turn the motor on so you can see it we're gonna, gonna apply voltage to the motor now and as, as you can see it's not moving if I help a little bit there we go bring it back if I change the polarity now it should go back because we only work in the EGR valve 100% all the time so it's fully, fully open now let me put the other way. The other way actually actually works. And it is back. So there is some problem with the cogs inside. The motor is actually fine. It's working absolutely fine. So yeah, let's open this motor and see see what we can find inside. I think it's a 2.5 Allen key. Okay guys, so I've got the EGR valve totally dismantled now and all that green stuff came out of, between the motor and the other uh, cog for the EGR valve rod. It's a bunch of green stuff, I don't know exactly what it is. But um, the EGR rod is moving nice and freely now and it's actually opening and closing really nicely. Um, this other side though is a different story. I don't know if you're going to be able to show you there, but uh, can you see the teeth on this at the bottom bit here? It's nice and sharp. And then if you look at the top, can you see the old worn out at the top? And if you look just underneath that PCB board, there you can see the cog for the motor. And look at that. It runs totally freely there until I get to the good teeth and then it start moving. So that was our problem. See, so get to the bad part again, nothing. So obviously when the ECU is commanding the EGR valve to open and close, um, when it got to this part, obviously nothing was happening. And I believe this PCB here, I believe is a positioning sensor. Because it fits just at the top of that 
metal bit here and is it is magnetic so I believe it's a positioning sen um, sensor so yeah um, this is the third time that Luke replaced this EGR the other couple times was uh, because it stopped working completely uh, the motor stopped working completely um, so I'm gonna he's got one of them in his hours I'm gonna check if the cog in the other one is good and I'm gonna replace it Everything else here is working perfectly, apart from just cleaning, you know, cleaning the cooling um, side there. Shouldn't be any problem. So he can, if he has any problem again, he can, we can replace it. You know, he doesn't need to buy a new one. But yeah, if you know more about this uh, EGR valve, you know, about this sensor, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, yeah, so this is the end. I hope the video helps. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, like it, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.